In this term, we start with the first chapter, which is the sequences and series. In the first review, we mentioned about the sequences of real numbers. Now, in the second review, we will talk about the series. We will start by giving the definition of a series, and then we will continue with geometric series, series with non-negative terms, and some theorems or tests which are mentioned uh, about the convergence of a series with non-negative terms. But if we want to go through all those things, first it is better for us to give the definition of a series, where we are saying that a series is an infinite sum of real numbers, where those numbers a sub n's are the terms of the infinite sequence a n and the index n here small n starts with capital N and takes values up to infinity but most of the time without loss of generality and for simplicity of computations this capital N will be taken being equal to 1 the, in the sum the symbol sigma is used to shorten the longest sum such as a sub 1 plus a sub 2 plus a sub 3 certainly we cannot write it infinitely many times that's why we use the symbol which is the Greek letter sigma and now we want to mention about this series in the following sense if you note here that we have in this case where the capital N being equal to 1 a sub 1, a sub 2, a sub 3 and then a sub n those are called the terms of the series where a sub 1 is the first term a sub 2 is the second term a sub 3 is the third term and a sub n is the general term of the series after the definition I think it's a good idea to have an example of a series where since this is the first example we consider a very simple case where for the series n over n plus 1 we say that a sub 1 equals to 1 over 2 which is the first term the second term a sub 2 is 2 over 3 and the general term a sub n equals to n over n plus 1 since we have an infinite sum either for the example sigma n over n plus 1 or for the general case sigma a n we may need to know whether this infinite sum equal to a unique real number or not if it equals we say that the series converges if not we say that the series diverges but to get the idea whether this sum is finite or not we define a special sequence which is called the sequence of partial sums of the series AN where the elements or the terms of the series sequence SN are obtained by using the terms of the series AN where the first term of the sequence SN S sub 1 equals to the first term of the series A sub 1 but the second term of the sequence which is S sub 2 equals to the sum of first two terms of the series A n that is S sub 2 equals to A sub 1 plus A sub 2 using this idea we can write the n term of the sequence S sub n which equals to the sum of first n terms of the series A n that is A sub 1 plus A sub 2 plus A sub n now we can follow the idea on an example now if you consider the series n from 1 to infinity 1 over 2 to the power n then we have the partial sums that is s sub 1 equal to a sub 1 s sub 2 equals to a sub 1 plus a sub 2 and so on where we can follow the expressions and the sums also we said that if this sum infinite sum equals to unique real number it converges 
but how do we determine that? We give a definition for the convergence of a series and we are saying that if the limit of sequence of partial sums Sn converges to S, then this number S is called the sum of the series and we can write S equals to sigma An. If limit of Sn does not exist, we say that the series An diverges. After this definition, we want to give one of a useful and important example of a series, which is the geometric series in this case, where a geometric series is a series n from 0 to infinity, where the general term of the series can be written in the form a times r to the power n. a and r are fixed real numbers, where a is non-zero, and the number r can either be positive or negative. But if we want to determine the convergence of the series, that is the geometric series, again we will define the sequence of n partial sums or the sequence of partial sums of the series, Sn, where in this case Sn can be put into the simple form a times 1 minus r to the power n over 1 minus r. Note that division by 0 is not allowed, so 1 minus r can never be 0, means r should not be equal to 1. But if we consider the limit of the sum, we have to remember the limit of sequences. If absolute value of r is less than 1, then r to the power n goes to 0. In such a case, this geometric series converges to the number a over 1 minus r, if and only if absolute value of r is less than 1. Here, there is a new word maybe, IFF. This is the shortened form of the expression if and only if. Mathematicians sometimes use this shortened form in their expressions or the computations. After the geometric series, we came to a useful theorem, which is called n-term test or the general term test. But this test, that is the general term test or the n-term test, doesn't give us a convergence criteria. Just we have the opposite condition maybe, because it says that if a series converges, then the limit of general term is zero. But for the convergence, maybe to show that a series diverges in fact, we use the contrapositive of this statement or the logical contrapositive we can say, which tells us that if the limit of a n is non-zero, then the series a n diverges, which is a useful result and it is applicable for many examples. If we consider the example for the series n from 1 to infinity, 1 minus 2n over 3n plus 5, limit of the general term is minus 2 over 3, which is non-zero. So we can easily say that this series diverges. But for the use of n-term test or the contrapositive, we have to be very careful because if you note here that limit of 1 over n is 0, limit of 1 over n squared is 0, but if you consider the series sigma 1 over n and 1 over n squared, the convergence of these two series are not the same, where the first one diverges but the second converges, means that if the limit of general term of a series is 0, then the series can be convergent or divergent, so if the limit is 0, we have to forget about the use of this test. Maybe we have to use some other test that we will discuss now on. After the general term test or the n-term test, we will define a special type of series. Those are the series with non-negative terms. And also we will give some tests for the convergence of these types of series. So by saying 
a series with non-negative terms, we mean that all the terms of the series are larger than or equal to zero. If we consider the sequence of partial sums, Sn, for these types of series, certainly this sequence is non-decreasing, where through those types of series, the first test that we will mention is called the integral test, where those test tests are given as theorems in the lecture notes, where we have some conditions should be satisfied, then we use an improper integral for the convergence of a series, and we use a series for the convergence of an improper integral. In that sense, this test is one of a very useful test. On the other hand, one of the examples of this test, that's the integral test, gives us another test, which is the uh, p-test, where p-test tells us that if p is larger than 1, the series converges. If not, it diverges. If we consider the previous two cases, and if we consider the series sigma 1 over n, that's p equal to 1, it diverges. If p equals to 2, it gives us the series 1 over n square, which converges. After integral test and the p-test, we will define a new test, which is called the comparison test. But if we want to use comparison test, where it will be followed by limit comparison test, a series will be given to us to test the convergence. But to test the convergence of the series, we will determine a new series sigma bn using the series sigma an and con considering the conditions and using the items 1 and 2 we will say something about the convergence or the divergence of the given series on the other hand if we go limit comparison test go through the limit comparison test again a series will be given to us to test the convergence we will again will determine a series sigma bn for the convergence. But in this case, we also use the limit of an over bn. That's the ratios of the general terms of these two series. Depending on the values of L, if it is finite, for example, the convergence of an and bn are the same. If it is zero or infinity, then we can say something about the convergence of the series an and Bn. After the limit comparison test, we will define two more tests. Those are the ratio test and the root test. Where the ratio test tells us that if the limit of an plus 1 over an equals to l, where l can be finite or infinite or infinite, what you want to say, then depending on the largeness of L, we can say whether it's convergence or diverges. For example, if L is smaller than 1, then the series converges. If L is larger than 1, then the series diverges. But if L equals to 1, then the series converges or diverges. Both cases can be possible. In such a case, we say that the test fails to exist. Where the ratio test will be followed by the root test in the summary. But before passing through the root test, I want to review once more that the, those three conditions or three items of the ratio test we will exactly be the same in the root test, but the limit will be different. In the ratio test, we are looking for the limit of a n plus 1 over a n, but for the root test, we are looking for the limit of and root of a n equals to l. Other conditions are exactly the same. But one more thing that I want to say about the use of these two tests, where it is basically related with the third item, if we use one of the tests to determine whether a series converges or diverges, and if we get l equal to 1 in one of these two tests, 
then no need to use the other because for the other L again will be equal to 1 but for L less than 1 or larger than 1 it may not be the same after all those I think we can summarize what we said in this review in this review we, will, we started with the definition of a series and then we mentioned about a very useful series an important series which is the geometric series which is followed by n term test or the general term test and then we talk about the series with non negative terms related with the series with non negative terms we define five tests such as integral test comparison test limit comparison test ratio test and the root test note that in this review there is almost no example for the convergence of a series for the application of those tests those examples are given in the lecture notes where we also know that there are series with infinitely many negative and positive terms for those tests for those series those tests we define five tests here can never be used because those are the tests which are used with the series uh, for the series with non-negative terms but for the series with infinitely many positive and negative terms we have some other tests which are used for the convergence and in the next review we will talk about those types of series and the convergence of those series where we complete the review by those words. Bye bye.